Hi friends, it's Belinda here from Be Making Joy. Welcome to episode 42 of What Brings Me Joy. This is being recorded on November 7, 2024. And this is a mostly knitting podcast coming from my home here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where I share my knitting journey with you. Uh, so you can help me keep track of all the things that I cast on. And sometimes you see sneak peeks of my designs. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, I'm so glad to have you back. And I am so grateful when you click the like button and comment on my video. It, it, it's really encouraging. And thank you. Uh, it's been a little over a week since I last recorded. But uh, as promised and as I need, we're going to go through all my UFOs, my unfinished objects, my whips, works in progress, and... Uh, Assess that list and decide which projects I need to focus on, which projects I'm going to give up on. But first, I do have a new finished object to show you, a new FO. I have finished the muscle burl hat, the third muscle hurl, muscle burl hat from my travels. This is a pattern by Yasoda Teague. And in the previous episode, I showed you two that I had finished, one for my brother and one for his wife. So now this is the one I've made for my husband out of the leftovers from those projects. So a muscle burl is a reversible hat. It's a long tube that feeds inside itself. These yarns are, this is an 50% alpaca, 50% rambouille from Red Island Fibers. <clears throat> in the colorway Twilight Dance. And this one is 100% Blue Face Leicester in the colorway Swamp Monster, also from Red Island Fibers. So it is a reversible hat. One end tucks into the other. This gray side, of course, is very much softer. So I imagine my husband will probably wear it gray side in, but I think it's pretty this way. So yeah, I finished object for the week. It turned out bigger than the ones I made for my brother and his wife because these skeins had more yardage on them than the honeycomb skein that I started their two hats from. Okay, so I didn't share much of a life update with you yet. In the, it's been a week. I did a lot of sorting through my photos from our trip and decided to release that video in two parts because it's over 1200 photos and the file turned out to be two hours long. And I spent so much time editing it that I only got through the first week worth of photos. So part one has been released from the Maritimes leg of our journey. Um, yeah. I also had an assignment this week in our ministry school. I had a number of other things to catch up on after having been away for almost a month. And I discovered yesterday that I still had the cellular data button turned off on my phone. So the only calls I were getting were any that came through as internet calls. So probably only iPhone cu customers. I don't know. So I apologize if anyone was trying to reach me on phone. We attended two hockey games in the last weekend. So that's where I got the time to finish this hat. Uh, Calgary Flames hockey games. I... I think that's all I have to share for our life update. So let's move on to whips. I'll start with my oldest, longest outstanding whip. Um, it's a papillion shawl pattern by Marjan, Marjana Knits, M-A-R-I-J-A-N-A -A -A Knits. I should start putting the names of the patterns up on the screen for you. So the papillion shawl is, papillion is, I believe, French for butterfly. And this is the second one of the pattern that I have started. The first one 
I did, whoops. <laughs> I did in exactly these colors. This came as a kit from Mary Maxime, a mail order company here in Canada. My daughter ordered the kit and I made it for her in exactly those colors and then decided I wanted one for myself. I wanted two or three for myself. I picked out a couple of different color combinations and started on this one. In January of 2022, I started on this one and worked on it, I think one weekend in Fernie, picked up, picked it up again the next year in January and worked on it one weekend in Fernie, along with other projects. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, the thing with this pattern is the pattern itself is 12 pages long, I think, or more. And uh, each row, as you can imagine, is uh, a separate construction. It's all short rows, right? The col each color pocket is done in short rows. I'll show you the yarns. <clears throat> oh, I'm using a variegated yarn and a black yarn for the trim. So, which way is front now? So it's all short rows. And it's interesting how the variegated yarn is falling just right into each of those little, I was going to call them leaves, but they're not leaves. They're butterfly designs. Uh, the yarn I'm using for this one is from Michaels. Uh, of course, I bought it in 2022, so it probably doesn't exist anymore. It's Cozy Wool Merino. By loops and threads which is the michael store brand it's a 55 percent superwash merino 45 percent acrylic they're both the same yarn uh, the original pattern is for a fingering weight and it's really lovely in the fingering weight but i fell in love with these colors and didn't really care about the weight of the yarn because it's a shawl it's not it's the difference in the weight of the yarn is just going to be how heavy it is how warm it is how big it is that didn't matter to me so yes it's turning out thicker but it's lovely so i really do love this pattern i really do want to finish it so but i of course i have other things we need to get done first but we are scheduled to go back to that house in Fernie this January. So I will take this project and make that my focus for that week. So this is going to be my January project and hopefully the only one I focus on that week. So it might get done in January. If not, we'll focus on it some more during finish of February. So, yeah. My next oldest project is a tablecloth. No, a placemat, sorry. A placemat that I was designing to go with the tablecloth pattern that I released in February of 2022. The, the tablecloth, I called it my Graham's tablecloth. I'll pop up a picture here because it's tucked away in my kitchen cupboard. But it was a gingham tablecloth with cross stitch on it. My grandmother used to make these out of ging gingham fabric and cross stitch. I think each of her granddaughters has one. And mine is on the um, coffee table in my TV room. So I was making placemats to match. But the thing is the design that's on the tablecloth is too big for the placemat. I need to rework it, regraph it. Now that I am very comfortable with my graphing program, it shouldn't take me too long to get it done. I just need to graph it out. So yes, we're leaving this on the to-do list. This yarn is Lion Brand 24-7, a DK weight cotton. Um, do you wanna know the colors? Blue marine, oh, that's French, navy. <laughs> White, of course. And I think this is the sky. 
my labels are on. The label says white. <laughs> I've, I've crossed my label somewhere. I think that was blue sky. Um, anyway. So that is staying on the to-do list. I don't know when we'll get to it because we have other design pub patterns that need to get published first. Okay, I'll cut out the rat on it. <clears throat> okay, my next oldest whip was started in April of 2023. I bought this kit from Ancient Arts Yarns here in Calgary. It's the Herding Cats pattern by Charlotte Stone and Ancient Arts dyed colors. Well, they had dyed years before they'd been dyeing and still are dyeing cat themed colors. And then this background color is dune grass. Uh, Herding Cats by Charlotte Stone. I finished the first sock in the summer of 2023 and then lost momentum because it doesn't fit me. Uh, I picked it up again this summer with plans to give it to my youngest daughter, Ilana, who has the smallest feet in the family and got this much done and then got sidetracked by the Summer Shorty Sock Club and made some socks for myself. So this is so close. I just have three more rounds of cats to do and a toe. So I'm going to start working on this again this weekend. We'll call this our just get it done pile. Oh, there, or get it done pile. <clears throat> so, one, two, three. My fourth oh, whip started in January of 2024. Um, a temperature scarf. I started doing temperature blankets in 2020. I did one for 2020, one for 2021 and then got tired of blankets, switched to doing a scarf for 2022, one for 2023, and here's 2024. Never actually worn the scarf. I don't wear scarves, even though we have a whole box full of scarves that nobody wears. But my plan is to join each scarf together, side by side, to make a blanket. So then you'll be able to see the comparison between all the years of the temperature changes in Calgary started in January 1st. Um, my work is up to about the middle of July right now. My work on it ebbs and flows throughout the year depending on how much TV watching I do. This lives in the TV room but oftentimes I've got something else I'm more excited about that comes to the TV room with me to work on. <clears throat> I did a lot of work this past week because I had a lot of catching up to do from our travels. All the new shows started their new seasons while we were away and um i just watch tv on the free global tv apps and ctv app and usually programs are only available for a week after they air on the free version but for some reason the whole of october remained unlocked when i came home so i was able to catch up on all my shows and uh, i'm up to the middle of july now so this will get done i will start another one in january and like I said, my work on them will ebb and flow. And the yarns I'm using are very old yarns. I got a big box sitting on the floor beside me. They're... Oh. <laughs> so I have tons of yarn left. Several more years of scarves can be done to make a blanket. Some of these yarns are like 30 years old. They're from Sellers and Kmart, which are department store chains in Canada that no longer exist. So yeah, going to keep going on those projects to use up all that yarn. Whip number five is my circular snowflake throw. So whoops, my bees are falling off my needle tips. <laughs> Um, I began this design in January of 2024 
And since I'm designing this using a 12 skein fade set from Ginger Snap That, I chose to commit to adding one color each month. I kept up with that no problem. This week I added November's. The design starts in the center, of course, with a snowflake. I've been showing you this every month since January. So I've got one color left to add. And actually, this color is going to start with an increase round using a pi formula of increasing rounds. So this increasing round will double the number of stitches on the needle, which will then mean I will only get eight rounds with that color instead of the 16 that these ones were getting. And so I think I will just do those in stockinette. And then I have enough of the first color left over to do an I-cord bind off with. I believe I have enough. Um, I don't think I will wait till December to add that uh, 12 color. But at any rate, I'm telling you right now, I'm going on record that I will have the knitting finished by the end of the first week of December. Uh, the pattern is written. And so I'll send it to the tech editor after we finalize the current pattern, which is the cloak. Um, yeah. Speaking of the cloak, uh, the test knitting application is still open. So there is the link in the show notes down below. But that's not what this video is about. So that was whip number five. <clears throat> UFO, unfinished object, number six, is my dodgeball sit-upon, or carry bag. So this is a modification of my stadium sit-upon pattern that I released, I think I released it January of 2024, at any rate. This is a modification of that pattern. The pieces are all knit. It just needs to be assembled. And it was, the knitting was finished in March. And then I um, paused before steaming it to ask my middle daughter, who is four, because she plays dodgeball, to ask her if she wanted a pillow or a bag. Because it's, it's can be either or. And uh, I'm not sure if she gave me an answer. I think it's bag. But she sidetracked me by asking for a donation for her dodgeball team's fundraiser and asking for a carrier for her asthma inhaler. So, so I set this aside and I made a shawl for her for their team's styling auction. And I designed an inhaler carrier pattern, which is now available for free on my blog at uh, bemakingjoy.ca. And uh, yeah, and then never got back to this. So this needs to go into my just get it done pile. Right there. <clears throat> All right. UFO number seven is this one. My lightning bugs wrap. Uh, a pattern in the gold on the wall here. I released 2021, I think. In the worsted weight. And I decided to re-yarn it into a fingering weight. The worsted weight is nice and warm. This fingering weight is drapier. And uh, so it's working out well. Uh, at the same gauge, it's working but I got distracted again. I lost interest, probably because I already have enough shawls. Like there's those on the wall. There's a whole stack of them here in my cabinet. I have enough shawls, so I lost interest, but I will get it done. Um, I should add a note to my pattern that it works well in fingering weight too. I believe shawl patterns work well in any yarn. The difference in the yarn is just going to mean a difference in thickness, a difference in drape, a 
sometimes a difference in size. Anyway, that's my lightning bug shawl. Uh, not making any promises on when I will get back to that, but it is still going to remain on the to-do list. <clears throat> Whip number eight. I started in June. I, got, I put aside the shawl because I decided I really need more cardigans. So this is the Milton Card Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. Starts at the top. Works down. And as I have left the body on needles and decided to finish the arms first because that affects the fit and then I'll decide how long the body's going to go. Maybe it will just go until I run out of one of the colors. Uh, it's done with a stripe of sport weight and a stripe of lace. So the gray is sport weight and the white, the, the blue <laughs> is a lace weight. So it's making a really nice texture. I really love it. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful, I think, um, perfect to wear with a summer dress. So this is my selfish knitting. Um, I haven't been able to touch it since September. So I'm itching to get back to it. And actually, I'm taking it with me today to our knit group to work on it. And then I promise I will get some of those Just Get It Done projects done before I come back to the guilty pleasure. Or I'll intersperse them with my guilty pleasure. That's that in my crazy yarn lady bag. <laughs> All right. UFO number eight. <clears throat> Vanilla socks that I was keeping as my purse knitting, my hockey game knitting. I didn't make a note of when I started it. I've been working at, at it for quite some time. And I'm not liking how it's working out. Um, I like the yarn, although it's thinner than most fingering weight yarns. But I'm not liking where the colors are falling, so I'm going to rip it out. Because I think it looks faded, right? On the sole, so it's going to look worn out. So I'm going to frog it today. While we're editing this video, I can frog. So we will delete that from our UFO list. So, let's put that in my immediate action, just get it done pile. Uh, next UFO, I started at the Fiber Festival. I took a course by Tannis Gray on Estonian knitting and my yarn's all unraveled. I'm tangled now. <laughs> but uh, this is the Estonian braids and inlays. A pattern by Tannis Gray. Hat. Um, don't know how big it's going to be. I don't think it will fit anybody. I don't think I really want to give it to anybody. Or maybe it will fit. <laughs> but anyway, it's... Uh, Going into my Just Get It Done pile, I enjoyed doing the Estonian inlay, so I think I will probably do more of that in the future. But I want to get this one done and put it on one of my mannequin heads. I have some more over on this shelf, too. So we're putting that in our Just Get It Done pile. Hey. Uh, whip number 11. This in my flames bag, although it's too big to go to a flames game. It's my Go Go Dynamo in Mystery Knit Along pattern by Stephen West. 
that, as you know, last episode, I had started on our travels. I'm now finished clue two. And I set it aside. Well, not really set it aside. I just think I'm going to set it aside. Um, yeah. It was the perfect project to take in my suitcase because it's a lot of knitting for a very little amount of yarn to carry with you. But it's not high priority now because, like I said, I need a cardigan more than I need a shawl. So I want to get that finished first. And then we'll come back to this. Uh, the yarn is by Green Gable Alpacas in PEI. So it's 70% merino, 20% alpaca, and 10% mulberry silk. It's so cuddly and soft. But like I said, we're going to finish the Milton shawl first before we come back to this one. Milton cardigan. We're going to finish the Milton cardigan before we come back to the Go Go Dynamo shawl. So, that's all my UFOs. Except for swatches in place for other design ideas, but I'm not counting them as UFOs because they're not actually on the needles. So, my whip count update. Last episode I had 12. I since finished the hat brings me down to 11. Once I actually frog those socks, I will be down to 10. So there's my just get it done pile. One, two, three, three things plus the frog and my Milton cardigan. But I have one more project that I need to cast on. Um, so as I shared last episode, my trainer cloak is now in the test knitting phase and I want to make one for myself in a solid colors. The yarns are now available for pickup at the Ancient Arts store. I'm going there this afternoon for for um, afternoon yarnies. I will pick up my yarns and then we'll finish recording. Okay, I'm back from Knit Group with my new acquisitions. We have the October color of the month, which I didn't get to pick up last month because it wasn't available before we started our trip. And we have the yarns that I'm doing my cloak in. <clears throat> so for my cloak, I am going to do the body in this color and then the trim and the hood in this color. This is uh, from Ancient Arts Yarns, it's all wool. It's their Lasco Fine base. Lasco Fine from Ancient Arts. It is 25% Mance Log 10 and 75% Punta Arenas wool. It's fingering weight, 285 yard to the 100 grams. And my body color is Kismet. It's a nice dark purple. And the button band and hood will be in Baby Aubergine. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, as I said, my test knit has already started, but there, you can still apply to join us. Um, the goal is to have it done by the middle of January. And so I want to knit along with my test knitters and have my cloak done. The cloak that's on the mannequin here. And then the October yarn, November's is not available yet. So November's will be on next episode. So we're behind. The October color of the month from Ancient Arts Yarns. Their colors are, this year her colors are always from paintings, flowers in paintings. So I will read from her email that she sends out to her sub subscribers every month. The October color of the month is Manet, flowers in a crystal vase. And she includes a picture of that painting, so which I will put it up here. 
Edward Manet, 1832 to 1883, was a French modernist painter who was one of the first 19th century artists to paint modern life and was a pivotal figure in the transition from realism to impressionism. Manet was born into an upper class family with strong political connections. Initially expected to pursue a naval career, he instead chose to become a painter. In his early career, Manet was not a proponent of the very popular at that time realism art mu movement, and his early masterworks, including the Lunching on the Grass or Olympia, premiering in 1863 and 65 respectively, caused great controversy with both critics and the Academy of Fine Arts. However, progressive artists viewed his style, new style as a breakthrough and it led to a new style, Impressionism. Manet was associated closely with many great artists of his time and his simple and direct style, heralded as innovative and fresh, has served as the major influence for generations of painters. Today, his works are considered to mark the start of modern art. Still life painting became fashionable in the 1860s and symbolized the decline of the old genre hierarchy of style and subject matter, including landscapes and historical events depicted with high realism, although it was still sometimes seen as merely decorative and suited to feminine talent. Manet attached great importance to still life painting and found paintings of historical subjects tedious, saying these pretentious productions weighed down contemporary artistic production. Manet's painted still life throughout his career, and these works represent nearly one-fifth of his total production. Contemporary critics and fellow artists recognize the importance of his still lifes, with some considering them the best of his work, although others try to diminish his work outside his life. Others tried to diminish his work outside of still life paintings as being of little merit. Like Cassaigne and Monet, whom he influenced, Manet saw, saw still life painting as the lab, laboratory for experimenting with color. His still lifes rejected traditional hierarchies and broke away from academic rules. As his health declined, Manet focused more on his still lifes creating smaller, intimate works that reflected his attraction to femininity, sensuality, and freshness. These late works also served as a distraction from his illness and are now considered a key part of his legacy as the father of modern art. So let's look at this picture again. This still life is one of Manet's notable works, Flowers in a Crystal Vase, 1882. Depicts a bouquet of flowers, including white roses and carnations, and hints of other flowers through the uses of dashes of defilium blue, marigold orange, brick red, and butter yellow, rendered with a mix of thick and thin paint to emphasize textures. Manet attached great importance to still life painting, which he considered the touchstone of the painter. He found historical subjects tedious. I think I'm repeating myself and believed that a painter could express everything through still life using objects like fruit, flowers, or even clouds. So, there we go. That's pretty. Okay, so that's all I have to share this episode. Thank you for walking down my whip parade with me. Uh, uh, I have a focus now for what I'm working on going forward. And oh, by the way, I finished frogging those socks. I left the toes. I could could attach them to a different yarn for another pair. So there, I'm down to 10 works in progress. I'm going to actually get this one started, though, ready for um, on-the-go knitting. Because once we get started on the increases, it's a lot of stocking at it. So, yeah. There's a hockey game Monday night, so I shall take it there. Um, we're driving to Canmore on Tuesday. So I should get some good progress on this with on-the-go knitting until it gets too big to be on the go. All right. So uh, have a good week, uh, maybe two weeks before I come back. And happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy sewing, happy painting. 
happy, whatever it is that you like to do, go make some joy.